Ladies and gentlemen, it's 2023 and we are here at the Rudolph Walker Interschool Drama Awards and I have... Right in Valley High School. school. <laughs> what are the best intros you're ever gonna get? Guys, are you excited? Yeah. Yes. Are you really excited? Yeah. How excited? Very. Listen, the energy all day has been brilliant and these guys are bringing it. So they're gonna be bringing their flavor, the salt. So who can tell me what the name of your piece is and what you are gonna be doing? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, the piece is called A Drop Stitch. And uh, it's, uh, it's interesting because it, it's a beautiful metaphor for about how you need to make sure that you never leave anything unattended in life, you know, because when you leave things, you know, when you leave them wrong and you don't put them right, sometimes it can come back to bite you. So, yeah, that's why it's that's why I quite like the name of the play. Sounds really good. So who came up with the concept and the idea? All right, so Tony came up with it. So what do you know about it? Um, it's a play about a girl going through a divorce of her parents and kind of the after effects of it. And why is this message so important? Because quite often we always hear from adults and how adults feel, but why is this message so important to hear from the young people? Because uh, it shows how it affects the younger generation, how it can have a long-term effect on their like adulthood and how they perceive things. What does it mean for you to be here today? Um, it's good. It's an opportunity to do drama on a stage. There's something about this guy. I'm, 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 you know, <laughs> there's just some. Watch out for him. I know he's got something that's going to be doing on this actual stage today. <laughs> okay, so that's a great intro. We now know why you're excited to be here. Yeah, has your teacher really helped you in being inspirational? Yeah, he has been a lot of help actually. It's, it's great. It's been a lot of fun in rehearsals as well. It's, it's good because we have fun in rehearsals, but we also like get down to business and stuff that we do as well. <laughs> down to business. Yeah. So talking about down down to business, like I just did there, who is your celebrity mentor? Right, he's the, uh, the, very, the very amazing, very inspirational, uh, very inspirational <laughs> gentleman, Mr. Darren Hart. Let's, and, give Darren uh, Hart. Let's give Darren Hart a round of applause. <laughs> I mean, just, just, I mean, come on, we're talking about actor, host, presenter, Mr. Commercial Man, you know, come on, let's, let's, let's give it up for him again. <laughs> a round of applause, Woo! Mr. Hart. Woo! Yeah, I mean, he's, he's been absolutely brilliant, you know, high energy, really great advice. It's, you know, absolutely taken our performance up to the next level, you know, it's been great. Even though I did call him a bit weird backstage, but like, <laughs> Okay, so why did you call him a bit weird backstage? We were talking about like a teacher in school and I joined midway through the conversation and I was like, oh, you're talking about Darren. And then, um, yeah, so I basically called him a bit of a weird one. And then he came in and he heard about it. And then yeah, I don't think we're mates anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's get this right. So who's the director for this? Um, Darren. Yeah, I'll say Darren and Sir, and yeah, like, yeah, mainly Darren and Sir. <laughs> yeah. I'll say. I mean, we've had Mr. Ephraim, our like teacher from school, who's kind of been, you know, running the space and everything like that. Yeah. Then Darren comes in and kind of gives us directions and things like that. So it's been kind of like a co-effort, I'd say. A nice combination. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And who's got the lead role here? Is there somebody here who's got the lead role? Oh. So how's it feel about having that lead role? I, I find it fun, you know. I just, I don't, there's just not any pressure, you know, and these have been so like, helpful and supportive. It's great. All right, so check it. This is what we're going to do. You see this camera here. We're going to speak to this camera because in that camera is Rudolph Walker. So we're going to say, thank you, Rudy. We're going to give him a round of applause and then we're going to wave. You ready? One, two, three. Thank, thank you, you, Rudy. Rudy. I wasn't expecting you all. Uh, my name is Dr. Bennett. I'm a therapist here at Epping Forest Counselling. My word, you're a wonderful audience. Thank you. 
Something I am expecting, however, is that in a few moments, a young woman is going to walk through that very door and tell me that she doesn't need therapy. The next patient, please, Ms. Roberts. Dr. Bennett, this is Miss Hayley Goodman, if I were. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. Good afternoon, Hayley. I'm Dr. Bennett. It is a pleasure to meet you. Hi, I'm Hayley. Sorry, I don't know why I just said that. You already know my name. That's quite all right. I'm going to be your therapist for the next five sessions. We'll have plenty of time to get to know each other. Five! Sorry, I'm not really sure if that's necessary. I'm only here because of my mate, Sin. Cindy Marsh. She recommended this place and told me to come see you. Ah, oh, yes, Miss Marsh. She's, uh, she's also a patient of mine, yeah. Yep. That's her. But look, I really don't think I need therapy. <laughs> Sin says I'm too damaged and I'm always getting in, into unhealthy relationships because of it. That's all. I don't even know why I came here. Here's a word of advice. Now, when you walk into therapy, it's specifically because you need help. Help that I'm trained to Oh, give yeah, because you know all about me, don't you? Well, I might be able well, to. Well, come off it. What could you know about me? Why have I seen you all begin? Well, come on. <clears throat> Let's see here. Your name is Hayley Cooper. You were born March 3rd, 1998, which makes you 25. You mentioned briefly that you've been struggling with your relationships. Could you tell me a bit more about that? I keep making bad choices. Most of my boyfriends have been complete tossers. Sorry, tossers? They've been quite abusive, actually. I just want to know why, you know? Why is this happening to me? Is it my fault? Hmm. How old were you when your parents got divorced? How, how did you know that? I never mentioned my parents in the information slip. Educated guess, really. Uh, Hayley, I want you to tell me about your childhood. What happened when your parents split up? as a therapist, I've observed it to be relatively common for my patients to relive certain traumatic events in their minds, though I myself have never been able to see them. Well, so kind of like a trauma replay, that's it. Well, absolutely. If that helps to rationalise it, could you perhaps tell me about what it is you're seeing? I guess I can try to. It's me, but not me now, I mean as a child. And I mean, my, my sister. Go ahead. I think my parents are in the other room, they're rowing again. Right. And is there anything about this particular scene which makes it stand out to you? Yeah. I think about it a lot. It's the night my parents were there. I remember every last detail, even what was on the TV. I tried to be for it, it makes me wonder. And what happened next? I went to school the next day, just like normal. Except I knew I'd be coming home to a quiet house. Dad told me he was moving back to Italy where his roots were. Something about needing to get his head together. He didn't mention he was taking his new girlfriend with him. I knew it was all a load of grass. I knew he was only leaving because Mum found out he was cheating on her. And now, now it felt like a good means for Anthony in the same country as her. No, 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 no. Even though it was his fault and not mine that he was a lying cheat. And it was his fault and not mine that Mum was alone and Joe turned out the way she did. And it was his fault and not mine. I never saw him again. Well, you've been holding all that in for a long time, haven't you? Look, Hayley, it's clear to me now that something terrible happened to you that day. Now, as humans, we all deal with these things differently. But what's most important is that you can process these emotions or you'll never be able to move on. So, you never saw your father after that? No, I never saw my father. I still had a dad. Granddad! There you are. <coughs> Look at you both. You've grown so big. You're the only one with me. We missed you, Granddad. Yeah. Ah, Miss Beauty. Very well. How's your mother? She's not well. She only cries a day. She doesn't smile like she used to. She's very sad now. It's not my fault, is it, Granddad? Oh, of course not. Don't worry. I'll make everything all right. I'm going to look after you two. Uh, all your keys here for. Look after little ones. 
Now, let's go back to the tape. Now that reminds me of these blankets your grandmother used to make. You see, sometimes the stitch would just drop. It wasn't a big deal, of course. It was even easily mended. But when it was left unattended, that was when the problem began. The whole thing was just unwrapped. It's just a drop stitch. What do you mean? I mean, you must have let it unravel you. Haley, it sounds to me like you're stuck. You're fixated on a moment in time. Frozen, if you will, as that little girl who just lost her father. You need to move on. Hayley! Hayley, can you hear me? You need to mend the drop stitch! What are you talking to? Don't worry, you just help me move on. Let's try a bit of affirmation, shall we? Why don't you say something to yourself? Okay. Hayley, it's me. You. I know that doesn't make sense, but I want to help you. I want to help both of us. Let's mend the drop stitch, just like Grandad said. How do I move on? I've been here for years inside your head. Every day I relive the same moment over and over again. And somehow, I know that it's all my fault. You need to show her that it isn't her fault. That it isn't your fault. But I know it isn't. Do you? Hayley, it's not your fault. It is. Why would it be your fault? You're just a child. How could you be responsible for that leader? Repeat after me, it's not my fault. It's... It's not my fault. Please, you have to believe it or nothing will change. Now again! It's not my fault. Louder! It's not my fault! Say it like you mean it! It's not my fault! I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I think I needed to hear that. It's the truth, you know. Yeah, I think I just needed someone else to say it so I could believe it. How'd you feel? I don't know. Better. I think better. I feel like a lot of weight's been lifted. Mm. After my dad left, my granddad kind of stepped in, did all the things a dad would have done. Taught us how to ride a bike, even helped me buy my first car. I always loved him, but he was old. He died when I was 18. After that, my sister kind of had to step in, but she was down a dark path of her own. What happened to her? Tell him what happened to me, Hayley. Losing Dad put a hole in both of our hearts. And I chose to fill that hole with drugs. I was just a kid. And all of a sudden I had to step in and be the responsible one. What's that all about? The pressure. It was too much. Mum was a wreck. And you weren't much better with your arsehole boyfriends. So I started dealing. <sighs> Got caught selling coke. I had to go to prison for four and a half years. Where were you, Hayley? Where were you when I threw my life away? At first I blamed it to myself for not being there for her, but looking back I don't think that's very fair. I'm sorry Joe, but you wouldn't have done any of that if Dad were there. So you, you blame, blame our father, father for that? Of course I blame him! He walked out on us when we were kids! He tore our family apart and left a 70 year old man to pick up the pieces. And even when he was there, it was obvious he couldn't care less about her. He left me wishing I had a dad, looking at all my friends and parents that loved them and making me feel heartbroken. I wanted a dad that didn't even have to be a real one, just anyone. For all my life, that's all I've wanted. A man who cares, a man who actually loves me. What did it matter that that man didn't have to be my dad? I could just find a boyfriend. A boyfriend would love me, wouldn't they? Unless you picked the wrong one. <laughs> oh my God, that's it, isn't it? All this time I thought I was looking for a partner, I was looking for a dad. Oh, it makes so much sense. <laughs> I'm a complete idiot, aren't I? No, you're not an idiot. What was it your grandfather called it? Drop stitch. Quite like that. This is all just one big drop stitch. And now you know it's mendable. So, same time next week. Oh yeah, definitely. I've got like so much more trauma I'm going to dump with you. <laughs> I look forward to it. Miss Roberts? <laughs> yes? Could you please put me two through for our next appointment? Same time next week. Of course. Would you like to come and move? Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go visit my sister. Good. <laughs> so, what have we learned? Well, Miss Cooper's case is a very common one. That is to say that each and every one of us on this planet, we all have our own drop stitch. Feel free to send in the next patient, Miss Roberts. Oh. <laughs>